you can eat to beat your fat. So you squash the metabolism. So it's not that slow metabolism causes you to gain body fat and gain weight. It's that extra body fat and weight squashes your metabolism. It's completely the other way around. How human metabolism works. So how many of us have heard this idea that, well, you're born with either a fast metabolism genetically or a slow metabolism? And people will point out, look at my sister. She was so lucky she was born with a fast metabolism. That's why she's skinny as a stick and eat anything. And that's was a problem. And then they always point me. On the other hand, I was born with a slow metabolism. My genetics aren't really good. And so I've been struggling with my weight the whole time. And that's a very common kind of, it's a common idea that's out there. But it's an urban legend. And I'll tell you when this urban legend was overturned just about a year ago. There was a landmark study that changed everything we know about human metabolism. And this was done by a study by a researcher named Herman Ponzo out of Duke University. And he studied 6,000 people involving 19 countries, okay? And he studied metabolism in people across the human lifespan from two days old to 95 years old. The entire human lifespan and studied 6,000 people in exactly the same way. By the way, these people were male and female, men and women, girls and boys. They were um, young and old. They were healthy and sick. Some of them had diabetes. Some of them had big body frames. Some of them were skinny. And when they studied the metabolism in exactly the same way, here's what they did. They gave everybody a drink of water, H2O is what we call water, in which the H of hydrogen and O of water, oxygen, had a special atomic signature, not radioactive, but everybody drank the same. Now you can measure in the lab the hydrogen and oxygen and therefore your metabolism in your breath, in your urine in your blood and so imagine this six thousand people across the human lifespan from days old to 90 years old in exactly the same way and they looked at the metabolism what did they find all over the map scattergram everything is completely confusing and so they said oh well you know isn't this what we just expect is that everyone's got a different metabolism well that's not where the breakthrough came the breakthrough came they developed an algorithm right in which they could actually subtract out from the results of the study the contribution of excess body fat, okay? We call fat adipose tissue. When you actually employed this algorithm to remove from the scatter of data, that remove the effects of excess body fat, it was like bada bing. Human metabolism emerged only four phases of metabolism across humans over the course of life. Everyone followed the same exact same pattern. So the inner workings of our metabolism are exactly the same. This idea that you were born with fast or slow, completely wrong. And the four phases are absolutely fascinating. Zero to one, your metabolism skyrockets when you're a baby to one year old. At one year old, your metabolism, baby's metabolism is faster, 50% faster than their, their metabolism as an adult, okay? Which is surprising. From one year old to 20 years old, all the way through puberty, when you see kids sprouting up, when they're super active, when they're eating two dinners, teenagers, okay, metabolism is going down, 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 down. Okay, to, so completely different than what we thought. From age 20 to age 60, metabolism is completely rock stable is how we are hardwired. This is through your first job. This is through your pregnancy. This is through your menopause. All right, it's exactly the same. And then from age 60 to 90, it does decline a little bit only about 17% by the time you're 90 compared to when you were 60, which is the same as compared to your 20. So when you're 90 years old, our hardwired metabolism is only 17% lower than when you were 20. Now, here's what happens. So that's the pattern of human metabolism. Like it's a bombshell that this is how we're actually wired. Now, what happens is that when you start adding back the effects of body fat into that equation, what do you think happens? You take this beautiful four-stage pattern and you start to suppress it. Okay, so you squash the metabolism. So it's not that slow metabolism causes you to gain body fat and gain weight. It's that extra body fat and weight squashes your metabolism. It's completely the other. So here's what I think. I think we should all try to aim at getting back to our baseline metabolism so we can be who our body wants us to be from a metabolic perspective. And part of that is by fighting extra body fat. We can do this with exercise and you need to stay active. But we can also do that with by eating food. And so this is the kind of the irony of what I write about. You can eat to beat your fat. And there's even more surprises because you can actually harness and leverage 
good fat to burn down bad fat. And so this is there's all these series, really surprises that turn the equation around. Don't fear your food. Use your food. Don't fear your fat because we need some fat to, to live. You need to tame your fat and so on and so forth as it relates to weight loss. I want to share with you five tips on how to optimize your metabolism. First, I want to give you the tips. Tip number one, you can eat foods that contain bioactives. These are natural chemicals that boost your body's health defenses and fight harmful body fat as a way of increasing and elevating your metabolism. An example of one of these bioactives that improves your metabolism is quercetin, which is found in capers, which I love to eat, and red onions. In fact, I wrote about 150 different foods in my new book, Eat to Beat Your Diet, that can help elevate your metabolism. Tip number two, you can starve body fat by shrinking its blood supply. Now, your fat is like an organ, and every organ needs a blood supply. So by controlling the amount of blood vessels feeding your fat, you can right-size your metabolism. Green tea is an example of a beverage that contains polyphenols that have been shown in the lab and in the clinic to control blood vessels, and these can also right-size your fat to improve your metabolism. Tip number three, eat Mediterranean style. This means choosing ingredients when you're shopping and preparing dinner to make tasty foods found in the traditions of Mediterranean and Asian cuisines. Just a couple of examples of these foods, edamame, mushrooms, chili peppers, garlic, broccoli, bok choy, tomatoes, onions, garlic, pistachios, in fact, a whole slew of other items you can find in your local, local grocery store or a restaurant menu. Tip number four, don't eat after bedtime. Your metabolism's hardwired to switch with on to burn fat when you are not eating. So by not snacking after dinner, you're giving your body extra hours to burn away body fat. And this can help improve your metabolism. Yeah, I'll give you a couple of examples. So uh, first of all, in my book, I read about 150 foods. I think this is the first book that I ever did is 150 foods that have been shown by human clinical research that they can actually improve your metabolism, decrease the amount of body fat, reduce your waistline, and improve things like your blood sugars and your insulin sensitivity and the healthy hormones that relate to your metabolism, okay? And so I think this is the first book ever to put together this compendium of all these foods. So let's pick a few out. Turns out tomatoes have a lot of good things about them. They're a great source of vitamin C. They're, they do have some dietary fiber, but they also have these bioactives, natural chemicals called carotenoids. One of them called lycopene. Lycopene, many people might have heard about, but lycopene is a fat fighting bioact. Here's what it does. It actually takes our harmful fat and helps to burn it down by activating a special kind of fat we have in our body called brown fat. So brown fat can good fat can burn down white fat, which is harmful fat, dangerous fat, and eating tomatoes will light that up. It kind of lights up the space heater and uses fuel so you can improve your metabolism, improves your metabolic profile overall, lowers bad cholesterol. This is all with tomato and actually shrinks your waistline as well. One study that was done actually took normal, healthy young women who were not overweight or obese Okay, because many researchers, many much a lot of research is done with people who are already overweight. But this is actually taking young, healthy female grad students who don't have extra weight. They're considered normal body size, whatever that means. Okay, that, that, that can be debated. But the bottom line is that they had just one tomato to eat before lunch every day. And they were able to lose weight and improve their metabolism. Very achievable dosing. So tomato can actually do it. Here's another one. Strawberries have also been shown to actually improve your metabolism. And what's really interesting by eating strawberries is that although strawberries can be sweet, when they measured blood sugar, eating strawberries in a way to improve your metabolism, not only decreased weight and uh, waist size and lowered weight and decreased body fat, it also didn't raise blood sugar. So this whole idea, another kind of like common idea that's kind of a, a kind of like a paintbrush idea, and eh, don't eat fruit, it's got too much sugar in it, it's got too much fructose. It might kind of sound like it makes sense on a casual level, but the science actually doesn't show that. And the reason is that the bioactives in the strawberry activate your body, so it starts to burn down, 
the bad fat. Now, okay, so you can actually metabolize even faster. This is, by the way, not about trying to become a supermodel. This is about optimizing your engine of your body. So another food that can actually actually have incredible benefits is actually tea. The sipping green tea actually has been shown to decrease excess body fat as well. So remember I told you this experiment where, you know, you when you remove the effects of body fat, your real metabolism starts to shine. And when you add unhealthy foods and you add extra fat back, you'll start to suppress your metabolism. So this is really the concept. We have a hardwired program inside us that goes through four phases of metabolism. If you want to be all you can be, work on the sum of the body fat, work on the metabolisms. You can eat foods like tomatoes and strawberries and green tea. And there's 150 other foods, including seafoods that I have in there, that can all work in harmony to help you get 